Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales! And now our host, she's our very own kaleidoscope of talent! What? It's Kelly Clinton! Oh, how nice! Oh, thank you so much. You make me feel warm and fuzzy. You warm the cockles of my heart. Welcome to Talk Tales on the Vegas Video Network. I am your host. My name is Kelly Clinton. Hyphen <sighs> Holmes. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a... <laughs> hey, can we... Next time, can we spell out the word hyphen instead of the dash? Scott, can we do that? That's... It's a dream of mine. I'd love to do that. Anyway, everybody has a dream. And we also have a great show for you today. We have a very special guest. He is a journalist, a columnist, a writer, and quite a personality. My friend from the Las Vegas Sun, Mr. John Katsalamidis, is in the house. I hope I, hope I said his name right because uh, it's been about six or seven years, and I certainly can't spell it yet. Anyway, he's an extremely interesting guy, and he's got the scoop. He is all over town. Before we meet John, I want you to meet our, our family here at Talk Tales, our Talk Tales Orchestra, Mr. Kenny Davidson, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Kenny, I happen to know that you're going to be out and about tonight. You're coming to the bootlegger. I'm coming to the bootlegger tonight, absolutely. To the Open Mic Cabaret. Yes, I am. And you're performing with a very funny gentleman, Mr. Dennis Blair. Who was on the show. He's, I think, your second guest on the show. I believe And we're going to be doing some Simon and Garfunkel tonight. Simon and Garfunkel. Yes. So we start at 8.30 tonight. So come and hear Kenny Davidson uh, really show off a bit. Mm -hmm. And I want to say hi to our producer, director, Mr. Scott Whitney, who created the Vegas Video Network. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Are you feeling pretty good? I'm, you know what? I'm in a celebratory mood. Because you. me, yes. stop, cut no, it I'm out. I'm telling you, <laughs> cut it out. I, I was bombarded by nothing but Facebook joy all yes. related to you. You know what? I am so excited about this. Broadwayworld.com yeah. has, I've been nominated for Best Comedian Female nice here in Las there. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. For, for my work on Talk To. That's right. So this is ours. This is our nomination, Scott <laughs> and Kenny <laughs> and Jacob and Kara. They so, always say that. Yeah, and you know what, though? I've got some tough competition. I'm, I'm, I'm up against, or I'm in good company, I should say, <laughs> with a very funny lady named Carla Ray, who I've known for years, a comedian and a radio talk show host, and Rita Rudner one of the queens of comedy. Right. So uh, pretty much I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm in the dust right now. Well, I wouldn't say you're in the dust. Well, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like there's, there's a uh, thing that where the bar, her right. bar's here, and then my bar's like here, and then Carla Ray is just a I can, little. You want to see the bars? I do want to see, oh, look at that. <laughs> it's like a stairway to the award. I've got a, that second stair has to come up. So sure. I hope our, this our friends is good. speak up and, and, Chime in and give us some votes. Very exciting for I, all of I'm us. very excited for you. Um, I want to tell you about something that I'm a part of this Friday night. Okay. I'm in a big show, Scott. Mm. A big show okay. at the Hilton, the LVH, they call it now. It's called Showstoppers, and it is um, it's with Bill Fain, and he's working with uh, Ragtag Entertainment, a Andrew Wright, and um, it's 100, 100, I believe, of Las Vegas' best singers and dancers doing the best of Broadway. So it's going to be a great show. What are you doing Friday night, Scott? Uh, I'm going to see Michael Grimm. <laughs> 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 he really are. He means it, too. He's Bye. not coming to the show. Are you sure? Because I'm co-hosting the show, and I got a couple of numbers, and there's a trumpet involved. Oh, well, then... In that case, I'm going to Michael Grimm. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll, you'll stop by for a few minutes, because it does benefit the Las Vegas veterans. <laughs> maybe. This is serious, this part. And also the uh, Nevada veterans, I should say, and Nevada Center uh, 
for blindness. So, you know, it's for a good cause, and it's the fourth anniversary uh, for Ragtag Entertainment. Okay, what else? Where do people go for that? Where do people go to the Las Vegas Hilton? Okay. LVH. See, he's just like home. He's not listening to me. <laughs> I said that. Um, I wanted you to know that um, <laughs> these are my brand new anniversary earrings. Oh, that's nice. I celebrated, uh, my husband and I celebrated, I was not alone, <laughs> in our five-year wedding anniversary yesterday, and he took me out to dinner at Oscars. Oh, did you, you like know, that? You know, that's our mayor's, well, our, our mayor, Oscar Goodman, uh, has a place at the Union Plaza, and it was so great, and, and, and the, the only problem was getting to the Union Plaza where Oscars is, we parked uh, at the California Club so we could walk. Well, we couldn't get through. There was a road barrier. It was, there was a movie being shot, Hangover 3. Right, right. So we walked, we tried to cross the street, and uh, one of the guys, the, the PA guys said, I'm sorry, you can't go this way. And we said, but we, it's our anniversary, and we have to, and, and then we heard over the, uh, the speaker, Get those people out. Move those people. Those people got to go. <laughs> anyway, it took us an hour to walk around all the barriers, but it was exciting. There was an Elvis guy on the roof of a car. They did. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Can I give you a tip yes? on parking at Plaza? Yes, please. Use the uh, valet. <laughs> I know, but we didn't realize. We were it's coming. Never, it's never full. It's never full. Huh? I know. If we had gone that way, we would have been. But anyway, the, the food was great. And the service was great, and, and, we, and we gave each other earrings. <laughs> yes. It's true. It's true. Anyway, I don't want to keep blah, blah, blah like I do all the time. I've had a lot of coffee today, but we want to save some time for our guest. Uh, right after this short break, we're going to have from the Las Vegas Sun, Mr. John Katsalamidis on Talk Tales. Three, two, one. Oh, I need to come up with something funny to oh, say. Geez. Three, two, one. Wow. But the co-host, really, you I have to say, watch it. Well, we're I'm doing. That's how you do it. You better really? watch it. There okay. you go. I got. It. We we're we, we are the odds couple. Hi, my name is Scott Pritchard, and I am Anthony Padilla. You're watching the Vegas Video Network. You are. You are. We are too. Welcome back to Dog Tales. Uh, I'm your host Kelly Clinton. <sighs> I've been Holmes. And I'm very excited. Uh, one of the great writers here in Las Vegas. Uh, very clever, creative, unique, and funny from the Las Vegas Sun and the Cats Report, Mr. John Katsalamidis. Thank you. Johnny Thank Katz. You. Johnny Hello, everybody. Katz. I'm surprised you have time to join us. I'm surprised also at that. You are the busiest guy in the world. I have one question. What is the Union Plaza? What is it? Is it it's called the plaza now, isn't it? Oh, okay. It? Thank you I for kid, correcting me. I kid, of course. I kid, of course. I have a parking tip about Okay, give, also. give me the parking tip. You do go tip. to ballet. <laughs> and also, I, I have an anecdote about the plaza, Union Plaza, as you, okay. you people say. Well, I've been um, here a while. I tipped a guy $5 at ballet once, and he uh -huh. broke down in tears. <laughs> so he did. We, yeah, changed, they need us. Changed his life. They need us. So from now on, folks, please. Yeah, the Union help, Plaza. Help a valley Vegas guy. institution. It's been there a long time. I'm really, mm -hmm. I, that's why I keep calling it that. Anyway, I know. I, can't I know, but you know it's what? It's out of love. But see, this is something you go through as a writer, right? You mm -hmm. can't, you can't make those kind of mistakes when you're in print. You can't, and yet I do. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that's one I've done. Have, done have that you before. done that? I remember the Union Plaza. Yeah, oh, I so do have an. And a have you written? And I've written Union Plaza. Oh, I've uh -huh. been corrected. And I, the Las Vegas Hilton also. I, know. I do that all the time now. Yeah. You can't uh, say the Hilton. LVH right? is is the t is the name of the hotel. It's not just right. it's been it's under different ownership. So um, yeah, it's it's something you have to keep track of all the different titles. Flamingo Hilton, remember that? Yeah. We, what we what did is the, it? It's not? the Flamingo Las Vegas. The Hilton brand is off that. Pretty soon we're going to have the Hilton back in with the uh, Tropicana. Huh? It's probably going to be Tropicana Hilton because they joined I, in the Hilton I, brand. So you always have to keep track of the different uh, titles and things. Your own name is an example. Is that true? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know what is it. Yeah, oh, like Susan I'm, Clinton now. No, no. Oh, I'm not Clinton a, Holmes because you married. If I change that, it would Clinton. be Farrah Clinton Holmes or something. Like that. I don't know why. But anyway. <laughs> Farrah Clinton. Have, have you ever had a really major faux pas like that though, where it was, uh, say, a husband and wife or a, just something that I really killed Ralph Lamb not long ago. No, you said the late. The late Ralph Lamb. Oh, yeah. that's the worst. 
I don't know how that happened. I think there's a, there's a member of the Ralph Lamb family who's no longer living, uh, but it's not Ralph Lamb. Oh, boy. Who told me he's still alive. He called you himself. <laughs> uh, that, that happened. You know, that will happen. And, and I found that the more writing I do, the more likely it is that I will sometimes step on a fact. And I do a lot of writing right now. So. Well, what's um, it, okay, like when you do your research, Wikipedia isn't, isn't it, right? Because Wikipedia mm -hmm. is not for Wikipedia sure. is, it will get the basics. Right. First dates usually, um, some uh, a, a career moments, a, a general biographical sketch. The deeper you go into Wikipedia, the more likely it is you're going to have a mistake. And I often ask famous people if they've read their wiki. wiki. <laughs> the wiki. You read your wiki? Their Wikipedia <laughs> site, because there's often something wrong with it. I have oh, a story yeah. about the big ragu, uh, Eddie Mecca. Remember him? Oh, yeah, from Carmine from, yeah. Laverne and from Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. He was in Hairspray. Here, this is a Wikipedia story. And I had referred to him uh, coming in, and I said something about him being the, the greatest five foot three star we've ever had in Vegas. Uh -huh. He emails me. <laughs> the Big Ragu emails me. Say, hey, thanks for the. Oh, there's no accent in the email, it's just an email. <laughs> thanks for the mention, uh, but I'm actually 5'5. Five, five. Oh, boy. Uh, you wow, hit, that was see? the first time I'd ever. You hit gotten a nerve snagged. there. Yeah. You yeah. hit a nerve there. Yeah, because you know how small Italian men are. Well, they don't, yeah. like, they don't like being characterized as such. You're so, going to get um, some mail again now. I'm a, I am a small show. Italian man, so I can, I can speak <laughs> to that, that culture. So anyway, yeah, you have to be careful about where you get yeah, your research sure. and where you get your uh, alleged uh, facts. And yeah, I don't know how Wikipedia got so big and so respected. When it, it's, it's the only thing of its kind. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's an online encyclopedia right. by, its, by how right. it positions itself. But the problem with Wikipedia is you can go in and edit it yourself. Right. Oh, you can. You can go. Yeah, there's a way you can get. You so can knife someone in that and, and doesn't like you can go in there and just say. Well, they I'm have a monitor, for. but you know, <laughs> they they uh, yeah they they, they people can get in and, and okay. edit their own material inside of it. So right. beware of Wikipedia. Yeah, you got to be careful. Is our, is our you know, John motto. Clint and I no. we try to get out as much as we can to mm -hmm. see other shows. But Clint has been telling me he's been trying uh -huh. to get out for five years. Hey, no, that's <laughs> not. That's not. I'm taking my earring back. <laughs> anyway, no, but we, we try to get out, and we, we just can't <laughs> seem to get out enough. I'm going to I know. get you. I'm sorry. But, but you it. are constantly out on the out. town. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you just support all these different shows, mm -hmm. and sometimes you see three or four, you're at three or four events in one day. And How do you do this? Um, I like what I do, and I don't go home. You don't go home. <laughs> home is where I keep my stuff. <laughs> I call it. Sometimes I, I have to I have to hit a GPS to find my way home. You know, you have to do you put sleep? my address in. I do sleep. Hmm? Like how many hours a day? Um, These are the tough questions. I yeah. sleep less than I should, but more than you would expect. Ballpark. No, at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, at my house. Who sleeps in a ballpark? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I spent a weekend at Dodger Stadium <laughs> during you know a road that? trip when the Angels were in town. No, I sleep in about I sleep <laughs> six and eight hours. Oh, you do? Uh -huh. uh, ambient or no ambient? That's personal. You don't have to answer. No, on Robindale. No, um, I'm a, I, I, what it, honestly, the honest answer is I really, I really like uh, going around town. I really enjoy Las Vegas. I just love it here. So I just can't get enough of it. I really, I really enjoy See, it. I love know. live uh, entertainment. I love the people who make the city uh, move and, uh -huh. you know, we call them movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm out a lot because I just, I'm always looking for stuff. I'm always entertained by it. I'm always fascinated by it. And when I gather all this information, the challenge is finding time to write, not uh -huh. finding time to sleep. It's finding time to write. Do you I prefer to write rather than than sleep. Do you write as you as you go, or do mm -hmm. you kind of take notes all week and then? Well, I, you write every I write day. on the, in... what we call on the fly. I have a MacBook Air that weighs about you know three and a half ounces, uh -huh. and um, I open it up when I have a chance. And when my mother was in town this weekend, yeah, and uh, we were I was waiting for her. She wanted to go shopping, so we went to the outlet <laughs> mall up there at Symphony Park. Mom goes shopping, so she's gone for, she goes, I, I hate to leave you here, but I'm going to go shopping. I didn't want to go shopping. So I went to the fudgery there in, <laughs> in uh, Symphony Park, and I was there for about an hour, and I wrote two columns. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. You, I mean, you write. And, uh, do you write a blog every day? I, I usually, on balance, write something every day somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of other stuff other than the column. I write for Vegas Magazine. I write for Las Vegas Magazine. I write for Las Vegas Weekly. I have the cover story in the Weekly right now on Zarkana. Um, uh -huh. And there's a, a lot of different uh, ways that I uh, produce written material. And uh, we have, I have a radio show, too, I have to plug. Because yes. Because she will be mad at me if I Cats don't. Cats? Cats with a with dish. With a dish. The oh, dish. starring Trisha McCrone. Trisha McCrone. at 7 a.m. KUNV 91.5 FM. Trisha McCrone. Trisha McCrone. Friend of both of ours forever. I've known mm -hmm. her for uh, over 20 years. 20 years, years and I, me 15 I, almost. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I, a dear friend of mine, one of my yeah. one of the closest people to me, and we decided we were going to do a radio show. And, yeah, I was going to ask you how that came about. I mean, you're pals. Yeah, we're friends. And, then, and, and like most deals it happened over oatmeal at the pepper mill and um, <laughs> I'm uh, having the ultimate oatmeal because at the time I was vegan I was writing a story about being okay. vegan and I was eating a lot of non-food and um, uh, I was eating this oatmeal or gruel or porridge I don't know what it was um, I mean having my porridge um, with a dollop of water and uh, Trish <laughs> says she's on me about the oatmeal she's and uh, we're going back and forth about this and and she asked me about a show I was I was doing myself called Ar Our Metropolis at the time. I was uh -huh. recording a show at okay. KNV called Ar Our Metropolis, a 30-minute issues and affairs show. And um, she uh, she said, I should be your co-host. Uh -huh. And I said, I don't have a co-host for Our Metropolis. It doesn't have a co-host. But somehow, over the she talks next, you the next couple it. of weeks, we had us a show. Yeah. Yeah, we had And it's show. fun. And it's, it it's, is fun, yeah. It's entertainment-based, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, we're not going it's into. It's not issues and affairs. Yeah. no. No. Um, although, if it were, we'd have General Petraeus on this week. <laughs> um, we need a drummer. We told can, you, can we get some dr Yeah, we need a drummer. So, so okay. Now, Poor Trisha McCrone right. is. Uh, <laughs> she has got more energy than anybody. She I has know. more energy than I know what to do with. Yeah. And she's doing she something. Has. We'll give her another plug. Isn't she doing a, a, a reality series? She or is. Maybe. And, and I don't know how much I can talk about this, but I'm okay. going to do it anyway. She, uh, Trish is one of the cast members of a show that was first called Vegas High Rollers. Uh -huh. And I believe they've changed the name to Sin City Rules. Uh -huh. um, and a friend of hers is a cast member, Alicia, yes. Alicia Jacobs. Yes, our and and her uh, go to person on the show is Trisha, and they've been recording this show. Oh, I bet you that's going to be. Entertaining. I, I promise you it will be entertaining, all that. entertaining. And um, I just hope nobody gets hurt. <laughs> oh, they have to get hurt. That's part of the whole deal. I hope deal. nobody has been hurt. But uh, anyway, Dish is going to be uh, on that. And that's, uh, that's going to be on TLC, I think, Great. in December, January. Very somewhere exciting. In there, yeah. mm -hmm. Very exciting. Now, you, um, I know that I've, I've talked to some of your friends. And I know you have lots of different interests. Mm -hmm. um, not just entertainment, yeah, really. like sports. I like sports. Yeah, and what made you go into writing as an entertainment writer, reporter? Did you write about other things before? Yes. And then kind of segue into it? I was a sports writer. You were a sports mm -hmm. writer. And I segued seamlessly into seamlessly. the entertainment. How? By being fired. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, See, these are tips for people trying to make it as a writer. I had a, I had a very fun. cagey career strategy. I kind of zagged when they thought I would zig. Why did I was, you get uh, fired? I was, because did you write? I'll tell you, Kelly Clinton. Yeah. Holmes. <clears throat> um, I was. I, I moved to Las Vegas to, as a sports writer, and for the first oh. two years of my life here, I was a sports writer. But it was a whole different world, a different lifetime for me. Yeah. And I will tell you that you can't live the way I was living. At that, in that period of time in my life, and be successful at anything. Should I, should I ask about what you mean by live the way I was I living? enjoyed the city in a different yeah. way and far too much. <laughs> <laughs> like when in you say days, you didn't come home. That's why I And do. the ballpark thing isn't so far off, is it? Arrowhead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Right, but then you had yeah. an epiphany. No, I, I, um, I'd, I had an epiphany and a, I had a pink slip. Both yes. at the same time, all and, um, related. All but anyway, related. yeah, that, that's no lie. I was I was uh, kind of crazy when yeah. I got here. Um, although I was very successful as a sports writer, uh -huh. I was a very good sports writer. But I was also very self destructive, and um, I was working for the Review Journal at the time, and I was covering UNLV's basketball team, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm going to go see UNLV play tonight. Oh, great! And uh, yeah, they're playing tonight against uh, Northern Arizona University, which I think is like Devry. Is that like a uh, you're, you're talking to the wrong. I don't even know. Yeah, it's like the, yeah, it's something like Phoenix. 
Sounds like anyway, something that needs a, a doctor's It's one of these, it's one of these online universities. Anyway, they're, okay, they're, so you, they're, they're playing tonight. Anyway, yeah, so yeah. I come down to Las Vegas. I'm, I'm a sports writer. I had a large uh, degree of success um, coming to Las Vegas. That's how I got hired at the Review Journal. But I got, as, as you learn in life, you have to change what you're doing if it's self-destructive. And I had to change what I was doing because it was self-destructive, right. uh, personally, um, physically, emotionally, and uh, professionally, mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. So I decided... Um, I decided in 1998 I was going to stop that behavior, and two years later I actually did stop that behavior. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at my everything has come from that. If I hadn't done that, um, it changed and you will talk to anybody who's been through this kind of mm -hmm. thing. Sure. If, if you if you don't know to ask for help in your life, um, you are sunk. Right. And I was sunk if I didn't do that. So now it's everything in my life is relatively easy compared to how I tried to work. Right. In that period of time. So, like, people ask, how can you stay out until 2 in the morning and wake up at 8? I always say, I've had longer nights. Exactly. Know? I've had worse nights. It's easy for me to but do you that. But you had to really hit a rock bottom to, to get to that place. You know I what? I had to stop myself from the hitting rock bottom, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. hallelujah. You know what? I, I'm not the only one who has questions for you. We have a live chat question oh my God. for John Katz. Hello. Who is it? <laughs> like Scott? I'm yelling Hello? at the chatter. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Chatter. Not, not drinking, huh, John? <laughs> uh, Bill wants to know, what's the most talked about scoop you've written about since being in Vegas? Um, I had the first print interview with uh, Roy Horn after his uh, uh, incident at the Mirage. Ah. And that was about two, three years after it happened. It was the third anniversary of it. And it was the first edition of the Las Vegas Sun print edition. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we went to a morning paper. How subtle am I? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just play right through it. You didn't see me over here. Yeah. Look at me. Look, Look at, at Kelly. <laughs> gotcha. Knuckle and we told you. Okay, go on. I know we went through this in rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, it was no. the first. It was the first interview Roy Horn did. It was. It was about three years uh -huh. after the after the Tiger uh, attack or helping, depending on what mm. what you believe. Mm. Uh, Tiger helped him off the stage and nearly killed him. And um, I interviewed him, and it was the first issue of the Las Vegas Sun Morning Edition. After we were a full service paper, we went to Morning. You know, where how we're delivered inside the Review Journal. That uh -huh. was the first time, first okay. issue. Was a, this big, and that went. Um, it went nuts. It was before you would say it went viral, but I was interviewed on Good Morning America wow. and Access Hollywood and uh, by all sorts of different outlets. I mean, I was on TV a lot. Was it that, that you interview. got the, the mm -hmm. first real It was a lot of information that hadn't them? been reported yet. And it was a long story. It wasn't just like, you know, uh, like a breaking little four or five paragraph thing that happened with Roy. It was an extensive interview, magazine length story that we, um, we had set up in, to run in concert with the opening of the new Las Vegas Sun. So after that, um, I was writing a column that was a print version of what I'm doing now. It was like four times a week. But that story, I had not known really even Siegfried and Roy very well at all before really? that story. I just saw him Friday night at the Zarkana opening. I know uh -huh. them well now. I know them very well now. They're, they're very, I mean, it really opened up a lot of, uh, uh, opened up a lot of paths to reach other people who were mm -hmm. prominent because they said, wow, if this guy's interviewing Roy Horn, exactly. he must be something other than a hack. So I fooled him. <laughs> so I fooled him. So I threw in the little curveballs, we used to say, in sports. But writing. you've had some, some major, major interviews with people that aren't, don't have a reputation of really uh, being easy to talk to or, or, or like... Jerry well, Lewis? Well, I didn't say that. But I will <laughs> say, say that I'm a fan, a huge fan, but I, I've heard that, you know, he doesn't just let everybody in. Mm -mm. I was in email correspondence with Jerry Lewis today. Really? Uh -huh. I'm trying to interview him. Jerry, I know you're not online, but if you are. Are you sure? I'm sure positive of okay. that. <laughs> all right. Jerry doesn't like the internet at no. all. He doesn't, okay. unless something's changed over the past few months. So you're Jerry to Lewis, to... yeah, a guy like Jerry Lewis can be very uh, difficult to um, get to. And, uh, and when you do get to him, it's, I always say it's like surfing yeah. or uh, in, a, in a ring with an unorthodox fighter. I mean, it's, you don't know where he's coming from. He can go in any direction. He's absolutely brilliant on several topics. Right. He has um, probably adult ADD. He's impatient, uh -huh. intolerant, 
extremely funny, uh -huh. and he's got this huge catalog, and he can he'll go back into an area of his life and talk for ninety minutes on yeah. one area of his life, and you are along for the ride. I, it's one interview that I can't. It's I just can never control right. where we're going. It's like bulldogging. It's uh, I can, it, it's impossible to um, have a normal conversation with him, and that's good and bad. Yeah. No, he's absolutely brilliant, and he's all those things. He's the toughest interview I've ever had to get. And this is the oh. toughest interview I've had to execute. But you've yeah. you've actually I've had, interviewed I've spent a lot of time several times. You know what got his respect was was um, again it's all about it's it's like hard work if nothing else will get you results. I spent two years practically embedded with the MDA when it was at the South uh -huh. Point, yep. especially the 2010 shows. I was I like stayed at the South Point. I was I got a room there. Mm -hmm. I would go and they gave me all this access and I was with the show through rehearsals all the way to the very end when he was taking oxygen wow. after singing on his last appearance. I mean it was incredible and um, I wrote and wrote and wrote <laughs> and wrote through that. I wrote something like eight columns in the second year and he uh, he really appreciated that because I was working really hard not just in general but for something he cares right. very deeply about Exactly. And he recognized that I didn't waste the access. I mean, well, it was he, all about that. So he ever trusted since you. It, That's the whole he did. thing. Is, mm -hmm. is. He trusted me not to do any damage, and he right. trusted me to stay out of the way, which I did. And um, and I I met everybody around him. His wife Sam. And, and Eddie a great Foy. Deal. Yeah. Eddie Foy right. Is right. A friend of mine. And all of the people who were involved in the in the MDA and Richard Belzer was hanging around. The, the actor. There, comic. you know what? That's I got like, to know him. That's so, not the only person who has really trusted you and welcomed you into their inner circle. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. So right now we have another live chat question, oh. Scott. Yeah, Flag Girl wants to know: Have you ever been starstruck by someone you've interviewed? That's a great question. I was going to ask that too. Was there anywhere that you <laughs> tongue tied or? Or um, where they're talking and you're not listening because you're going, I'm sitting here with other I'll tell you a couple of instances. There, one is long ago and one of them is fairly recent. I, the first actual star I interviewed really at all in Las Vegas, and this is after I was a sport. I, there was sports figures, which I was very used to. I interviewed Jerry Rice. I interviewed Steve Young in Northern California, those types of people. But I'm comfortable. It's an athletic arena. I know my, you know, I know my way around it. I interviewed, um, when I first got here, I interviewed Wayne Newton. Who and his family, that's Trisha's his brother in law. When I interviewed Wayne Newton, I was shaking all over. Why? I, mean, I was shaking. Why? Because it was Wayne Newton, and I couldn't believe there's something about Wayne, you know, it's yep. like the iconic yes. figure that Wayne Newton is, and all of a sudden you're sitting across and from him. And his presence and is really he's, powerful. He's a very isn't physical yes. person, um, and just everything about him was so powerful to me. I was really nervous. I was, and this was in about 1998 or 99, when he was starting at the Stardust, whenever that was, 99, okay. um, when he just signed his contract. And I'd done a lot of phone work. This is how I got to meet Dish, was on the phone when he was in a, involved in the lawsuit okay. with Tony Orlando. Uh -huh. And I was spending a lot of time on the phone. Same thing as Lewis, you know, a lot of time, you know, working on this story and going back and forth. And I had or John Orlando was calling me and Trisha McCrone was calling me, telling me both sides of this lawsuit they had going on in Britain. So how did the in-person meet? So I, I'd written this big story about, the, about this lawsuit it was very fair and very comprehensive I mean it was it was it was a it was a lot of story and I got to know Trisha on the phone before long before I ever met her which I guess to, in, by today's standards isn't that uh, unusual but by, back then it was really unusual and um, <laughs> John has all these side you know, things he goes I could you call a 900 number now and you get that anyway but, um, <laughs> but this was in Branson and it was a disjointed and, and I met him at uh, the news conference where they announced the Stardust uh -huh. contract. They had a, a, a total Vegas news conference where they introduce Wayne and he comes out and sings a little, you know, talk a shit, a little of that, talk a talk a shit. and I'm like, wow. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I go and I, afterward I, I meet him. That's when I met him. And he pulled me down. He still does this. He pulls me and, you know, lifts me up, really? pushes me around. <laughs> Hits me with an open Oh, he's a little rough. He's isn't like, he? you know, he kind of gets physical with you. Hey, how you doing, chief? Pow. You know, pow. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm doing great. Oh, for the bruise ribs. Oh, my tailbone. <laughs> and um, and uh, I was really, I was sitting down to do another interview with him, and huh? I, couldn't, I couldn't even focus. I was, really? I was just mesmerized by this as Wayne Newton. It was the first actual superstar person I'd actually interviewed in person at really? length that way. Yeah, that was then. Okay. And more recently... Um, and Wayne is just it's a dear person. He's meant a lot to my career, Wayne has, because at, at that point, that's another one where, you know, I thought, wow, I could actually interview famous people. That's right. Not just 
infamous people. And um, <laughs> I interviewed, I was on a conference call with Steve Martin. And really? uh, this was before oh. his, uh, he was to appear at the Mirage um, last year. Uh -huh. not, not the um, So when you say outside. conference call, what do you that, mean? What it was, was um, every, uh, reporters from all over the country call in ah. to be a part of this uh, So you're all group on the line. Where there were about 17 or 18 of us. And you dial in. And I'm waiting, and, I said, and John Katzlamitas from the Las Vegas Sun, you're on with Steve Martin, <gasps> who's my hero. Wow. He's like you my always, Carol Burnett. Brit and you? I always think that you remind I, I, us. I, I, know, him. Because I know this. My, parent, my parents, everybody says this because I was into Steve Martin. Yeah. So let's get small. I listened to him until the vinyl was, yeah. was bald. Yes. I mean, saw him on Saturday Night Live. Not kidding. When he first was on that, I would watch everything he was on, played all his albums, and you just become... That. I know, yeah. You know, you, you can't, you can't help it. It's, 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 he's my Carol Burnett. Like, you yeah. have your Carol Burnett. So you're on Martin. the line. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't. This is last year. Ah. I'm like, okay. I'm just trying to keep myself together. And I'm like, are you going to play? I said, we're very much looking forward to having you in Las Vegas, having you come out to Las Vegas. We're really interested in this because I'm very interested in coming back to Las Vegas. And I said, yeah, that's right, because your last show as a stand up was at the Riviera, right? And he goes, that's right. I just read his book. Yes. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be okay now. And, uh, and then I asked about, um, I said, we're interested in having you come out. And he says, I'm very, he said, I'm very interested. And I said, are you going to be playing King Tut in this bluegrass uh -huh. lineup? Because I had seen on YouTube that he was playing King Tut oh, live with okay. the bluegrass that's band, Steve Canyon Ring. That's interesting. Rainey. And he did. He said he was going to play it. That's great. And he did at the Mirage show, which was incredible. Well, he played a bluegrass version of King Tut, but he didn't do it the next time at the uh, I would at love Performing to hear that. But I was so nervous. This was a guy that was just like, I mean, I can't tell you. I don't know what I'd do if I was ever in front of him. But um, Oh, so you know what? This I'm, was just I'm sure you're going to get to do that. I but mean, he's here today. He's here right now. Come on, Steve. <laughs> we have a live chat question, but I, I got to get back to the a friend of Steve Martin that you did get to meet and work with. Okay, well, who oh, do yes. we have on the line? Uh, Papa wants to know, have you ever refused to uh, interview an entertainer after uh, request to do so? And if not... Who was your most difficult entertainer to deal with, and perhaps whom would you not want to ever interview again if asked? Have I ever turned down? Yeah. An have you ever said, "Oh, absolutely not. I don't like the person, or I'm not interested in what they do." Let me. Um, and be careful. Think about. This. But not too careful. Let me then think we'll about this scoop. and be honest about it. Um, I had an incident <laughs> uh, on the phone. It happened to be with Tony Orlando. Uh -huh. It was unpleasant. Okay. Um, I did finish the interview. It was over segments, and we uh -huh. we since patched it all up. Okay, but, so you you've made up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, he, he we've actually been in email correspondence fairly. This was about seven years ago. Right. It was right before he was doing his uh, holiday show here, and I think it was at South Point. So you maybe didn't print the story that maybe you were gonna. Uh, I can't remember whatever came of the interview. I think I did write it. Write it as a column. Okay, before we run out of time, I mm -hmm. have to say that Clint and I went to see one of, well, he's one of my heroes, I'm sure yours too, and Clint's. Uh, we went to see Martin Short. Yes. On the big stage. Oh, that that you certainly were <laughs> at the, the Mirage. At the Mirage. At the Mirage. Very and we're, theater. we're enjoying the show, laughing our heads off. And then all of a sudden, a guy with bagpipes and a, a kilt comes out to be a part of this sketch. And we turned to each other and say, "Is that John? Yeah. That's John Cass." I had no, ca I had no bagpipes. He was. The you didn't have. Oh, he was the bag. There's a photo yeah. right there. That oh. was a, What the deal was? All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his thumb we in have your mouth. Kilt, Tam. Yeah, and I'm carrying him. Uh, Martin Short weighs 155 pounds. I know that's your question. <laughs> we had done an interview, and uh, it was the same thing. Martin Short is another one. I was like very nervous about. Yeah. But um, we we. Conducted the interview, and after the interview, one of his people called and asked if I would be, if, they didn't ask outright. They said, can you lift 155 pounds, and are you free Friday and or Saturday night? But that see, was that's the pitch. hysterical. You don't even know what Which it's is, for. yes, every weekend. It's true. <laughs> I can do that. And, How uh, did they know that you had the funny bone? Because, I mean. I think yeah. that something happened after. We had a great interview, and then something happened after the, the talk. They do this sort of every stop when he does one-offs. Or, or weekend uh, performances, and um, so yeah, they. I went to rehearsal, and we rehearsed it, and uh, he played um, uh, Amazing Grace, or I played Amazing Grace with him in my arms, 
and he stuck his thumb in my mouth, as you saw. We, we came out, and all I can tell you is I, I walked out, we marched yeah. out, yeah. and then I get face to face, and I did this, did this two times, and all I could think each time was, do not drop, drop Martin, Martin Short. Short. <laughs> exactly. You might ruin your career and damage his. Exactly. And, um, and, uh, but it was, so it went well. It went great, yeah. And he sticks his thumb in your mouth, and you're, so you're... That's pretending to that's squeeze and play him as, as bagpipes. And he goes, bah, 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 bah. Right. And you were yeah. great. You were so funny. You were all in. You yeah, were we were definitely. Then I saw you after. We saw you after. And, I, and we were like, oh, my God. And you, you had the, it was your second night. So it wasn't mm -hmm. the first It was a night, Saturday night. But you had this face, <laughs> like, after. And I said, John, I, you're okay. I, it happened. You, you were great. I totally understand it after doing it just for those. It was two minutes each, mm -hmm. each night. And uh, after walking on stage and having people respond to something yeah. you're doing, and all I could, I really couldn't see, but I could hear. And when they laughed and, and applauded, I was like, I totally get what you and Claire you're hooked. do. The, I mean, you're I can just imagine what it would be like to do this, you know. Um, but I was in another zone after I I mean, know. both nights. I was like, but you were I, so, I was, I was so glazed so over, you, you know. You were great, and we'll, we'll never. It was easy. <laughs> we have another live chat question. You are so popular on our live chat. Yeah, our last question for the night from Sally. If you had only one more interview to conduct, who would you talk to? Broadway World God, nothing uh, nomination. <laughs> nothing uh, spring to mind. I love music. It would have to be somebody who I'm a friend with who's achieved something, but nobody's coming to mind. Oh, yeah. I have never. <laughs> Oh, the, it's moving. The one it's on the moving. left. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. It is moving, and so is the graph. What do you want to know, oh. John? Um, I would think uh, I've never interviewed yeah. Sheldon Adelson. That would be kind of interesting to that, me. Wow. I've never. That would be especially right now. Um, Did you have you tried to have you tried to get that going? Maybe that's the reason I haven't interviewed him because I've never really made a. Yeah, push you gotta to like call <laughs> or you know email and ask. Um, he would be uh, one because of the what. Uh, and and I have interviewed him b before, but Steve Wynn is always up there for me. Um, somebody who's really 30,000 feet up, who's really yeah. helped create where we live. Those are the two who um, who spring to mind if I had I, to do I was one wondering more. if you had interviewed Steve Wynn, because I know you've I have. written about You have. Mm -hmm. A couple times, yeah? yeah. I wrote a story. We both were happened to be vegan at the same time, and I wrote a story about that process. And that's why and you And that turned into a wildfire of a story. Really? Yeah, I talked about it. Steve Wynn, as he disclosed to me and wrote and I wrote about, was addicted to painkillers for a time. Oh. And uh, talked all about what that was like. I mean, really in detail. Wow. This came off us having um, another, like, bowls of gruel like a, like at his villa. Gruel, you call it? I, it's gruel? like, a, it it's like a paste. Vegan paste. Everything okay. vegan is made out of the same thing. <laughs> you know what, John? We are having such a good time. I know we have to go, but I, have, I do have to bring up the point that I mentioned earlier that you support all of the... The, the shows and the I do. entertainment. And I mean, you're at Santa Fe on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. You're there Sometimes for the healing. Mm -hmm. We had Jerry here last week. I mean, you've, come, you've supported Clint. Mm -hmm. uh, and Easy to support Clint. Right? And Zoe Bowie. I've not Bowie, seen a better singer ever uh, than Clint Holmes. I know. Ever. Say that again, because I talked over it. No. Say that again. <laughs> um, I have not seen a better singer, heard of, seen or heard a better singer in my life than Clint Holmes. And that's for everybody. Yeah, I didn't. I did not know he was married until this week. <laughs> <laughs> we go out and hang out, and he's doing this thing with his ring, and you know, it's like just <laughs> on the cute, you know. On the well, cute we cats. we love you, and we, we likewise we love to read your columns and and your Good. cats report and your blogs because you you bring something special that's only you. Your sense of humor and your take on things. You're just great. You're a joy and a treasure here in Las Vegas. Thank you for having Thank me. you, John Katzenlamitas, for being our guest. Anytime you want me on, I will do it. Okay. Thank you, Kenny. Will you play us out a little, you know, way down in Louisiana, close in New Orleans, back up in the woods, I'm on the evergreens. This is the song we're doing. We stood a log cabin made of earth and wood. Then a country boy named Johnny, Johnny be good. He really learned to read and write so well. And he would play, play the guitar just like a ring in the bell. bell. Go, go! Go, go Johnny, go, go! Everybody, go, Johnny, go, go! Go, Johnny, go, go! Go, Johnny, go, go! Ah, Johnny, be good!